Hi, in this video, I will show you how to perform ray tracing in Comso Multiphysics. Assume that we have an electron beam and there is a background electrostatic field. We want to see how the background electrostatic field impact the path of the electron beam. This has a lot of applications, for example, in electron microscopes. If we use an electrostatic lens by controlling the parameter of that electrostatic lens, we can focus the electron beam on the position that we want and also we can minimize the optical parameters. In general, we have to investigate two scenarios. Uh, in the first case, which is the simple case, the electron beam does not create sufficient electromagnetic field such that uh, we only have to investigate the effect of background field on the motion of the electron beam. In the second scenario, the electron beam has sufficient space charges that creates a reasonable electric field or it has a sufficient amount of current that creates reasonable magnetic field. So we have to consider not only the background field but also the electromagnetic field that is created by the beam itself. In this video, we will consider the first case. So only the effect of background field. In some scenarios when the energy of particles is very high, so we also have to consider relativistic effect. But again, in this video, we will not consider relativistic effect. So I divide the video into two parts. In the first part, I will uh, introduce an example. This is a very basic example that I assume all of you have studied in high school. Uh, an electron beam passes through a uniform background field. And the electron beam will get deflected. So we solve this analytically, and we get the equation for it. And then we implement the same thing in COMSOL, and we verify the results with the analytical calculation. Using the same approach, you can basically make more complicated lens shapes and basically replicate what I have put on the thumbnail. Okay, so let us start. All right, so the example that we want to investigate is an electron that passes through a uniform electric field. Here we have ground, this is minus U. So the electric field is uniform and is toward upward. Uh, the value of electric field is u divided by this distance, u divided by d. The electron has an initial energy of E0 and initially the angle is 0 with respect to x direction so it's totally parallel to the x direction. But of course when it comes into the region with electric field it will be deflected and uh, it moves through this space but it would not be only the x direction. So initial velocity uh, we can find it based on the energy of the electron. So the energy is 1 over 2 mv2. This is kinetic energy. Uh, because we said that it's only in the x direction initially, so all this energy contributes to the velocity in the x direction for this initial point. So vx, when time is 0, is equal to square root of 2e0 divided by m. And initially, we don't have any velocity in y direction, so this is 0. Based on Newton law, we have f is equal to ma and uh, electric force f is equal to qe so we can make them equal acceleration is qe divided by m so acceleration is second derivative of uh, displacement with respect to time so we can write the components second derivative of x with respect to time is equal q electric field in the x direction divided by m and same way we can write second derivative of y with respect to time is equal q e y divided by m Okay, so first let us solve the first equation. Uh, because we know that there is no electric field in x direction for this scenario, the electric field is only in y direction. So Ex is 0, uh, which means the second derivative of x with respect to time is 0. We can take double integral. x should be k1t plus k2. And we can use initial condition to find k1 and k2. For example, at time equal to 0, we assume this is x0. This means k2 should be 0 because you put t equal to 0 here, this disappears, so k2 should be 0. And at time equal to 0, we had a certain velocity in x direction, so basically this is the velocity, k1 is equal to that velocity. Combining these two, x will be a square root of 2e0 divided by m, multiply time. We can also solve the second equation in the y direction, Ey, as I said, uh, all the electric field that we have is in y direction and is equal to u divided by d. So instead of Ey, I can write u divided by d. And basically, 
taking the integral. So first we take one integral and then another integral. Eventually we end up with this equation. So y should be equal to this, multiply t2 plus k3 multiply to t plus k4. Again, using initial conditions, we can find k3 and k4. For example, if you put time equal to 0, assume that this is the y0, this is 0, this is 0, so k4 has to be 0. Or velocity at initial point in the direction of y was 0, so if I put t equal to 0, also we conclude that k3 should be 0. So y will be qu divided by 2md multiplied t power 2. So we have an equation for y and we have an equation for x. Both of them dependent on t. Now let us assume that we start at the middle of this space. So this height is basically d divided by 2. So let's see how much time it takes for this electron to hit the lower electrodes. So in that case, the amount of y motion should be d over 2. So it's minus d over 2 in the lower direction. And basically is equal to this. So we can calculate time. So the amount of time needed for this electron to hit to the lower electrode is d multiply the square root of m divided by eu. We can put this time into this equation. And then after simplification, basically we get x is equal to d square root of 2 is 0 divided by eu. This means if we have an electron started from here with energy E0, it comes and it strikes here. And this x is actually this equation. Now let us assume some numbers. For example, this u, let us assume it's 1,000. And initially it starts with 1,000 electron volt. So this 1,000 electron volt with electron and 1,000 would disappear. So we have a square root of 2. And let us assume d is 1 meter. If d is 1 meter and we start from the middle of it, then x becomes 1 times square root of 2. So this distance will be a square root of 2. So when we do numerical modeling console, uh, we will replicate this example. And we expect that uh, the electron beam starts from here. And it comes to this position. And it hits here. This distance is the square root of 2 meter. Assuming that this is 1,000 volts, this is 1,000 electron volt, and this is 1 meter. Now let us build the model in console and compare the results with this analytical calculation that we have. All right, so here I have console open. You click on Model Wizard, 2D, ACDC, Electric Fields and Current. You select Electrostatic. From Particle Tracing, you click on it. First one, Charge Particle Tracing. Here we have other scenarios, which I talked about them at the beginning of the video. In case we want to include the electromagnetic field created by the beam also in the calculation, then we have to use these other options. But in this case, I'm going to only use the first one. Click Next. Study. So we have to do a time-dependent study, but also we have to do a stationary study for electric field calculation. So first I add a stationary, and then I will add time-dependent. So here you right-click, add a study, time-dependent. So this one close. You come on geometry, right-click, rectangle. Height is 1 meter, width is 3 meter. Because we want to release the electrons from here, I'm going to put a line segment in this section. So coordinates 0 0.55. Coordinates 0 0.45. We will release the electron from the centroid of this selection, which is 0 0.5 meters. Material, right click, blank material, permittivity 1. Electrostatic, right click, ground in the lower section. Electrostatic, right click, Electric potential on the top, we put minus 1,000 volts. Charge particle tracing, right click, particle beam. We are going to select these uh, line segments, and the beams will be released from the centroid of this line segment, as it's mentioned here. Here we have now 1,000 particles. I'm going to reduce it to 1. In reality, when we want to release the particles, the particles will have certain type of statistic. So in order to properly state such statistic, we have phase space distribution. And using these uh, emittance and twist parameters, we can uh, express that one. Now I'm going to talk about this in a separate video so that we can go deep into this and see how we can uh, properly release the particles uh, so that it 
uh, fulfills what we want. In this case, I'm going to put this emittance one nanometer. This will show us that uh, all particles will be released from very narrow band. So everything will be almost from 0 0.5 meter. And then for the energy, I put it 1000 electron volts. That's all for this part. Right click on particle and add an electron force, electric force. So we add this whole section. For electric field, we can manually enter how the electric field will look like, or we can calculate it from the other physics, in this case from the electrostatic physics. Okay, so for the mesh, we going to select very fine mesh. Now a stationary analysis, we are going to only solve electrostatic uh, equations. So I uncheck this. By doing so, we can basically calculate the electric field and later we use the electric field to do the particle tracing. So here is the voltage distribution. This is the ground. This is minus 1000 volts. Study two. This is a time dependent study. We don't need to do electrostatic uh, again, because we have already done it and it's not time dependent, so we uncheck that. Here we have to couple this study to the previous result. So click on values uh, of dependent variable. In the second one, click on it, user controlled. We select the solution. And here also we select from a stationary one. Basically, in order to do this time dependent analysis, which is related to discharge particle physics, we need one parameter from this uh, analysis, and that is the electric field. So we get that one from this stationary study. Here we have to also identify the time steps and duration of the simulation. So let us state 1 e power minus 10. So 100 picoseconds time steps, and this one, 1 e power minus 7. So until 100 nanoseconds. Uh, these numbers, basically, you have to know the initial energy of the electron, so how fast it moves. You want to have the steps sufficiently small to be able to catch the motion, basically. And uh, this final simulation time is basically when the beam totally passes the boundaries or stick to one boundary. So you want to have some estimate for those values. All right, so now I run this simulation. You come to this particle trajectories, you click on it, this one, you select line, and from here you select none. And basically this is the trajectory of the electrons that we have released from here. The electron had 1000 uh, electron volt of energy, and here was minus 1000 volts, so the electric field was also upward, and this distance was 1 meter. We release it from 0 0.5 meter. Uh, from analytical calculation, we said that this distance should be a square root of 2, and if we zoom in, we see that that distance is actually a square root of 2. This uh, confirms the analytical um, calculation. Actually, analytical calculation confirms the simulation. So we know that the simulation is correct. Now, in case you want to, want to do similar analysis for more complicated scenarios, like the one that I put on the thumbnail, for example, you have multiple lenses, uh, each of them at different voltages, so then the beam may be deflects multiple times when it passes through the lens and eventually goes out of the lens. So you can do the same thing uh, using similar strategy. All right, so that's all for this video. In the next video, actually, I'm going to talk about these particle release conditions. Maybe I'm going to show you a little bit. So let us assume we have 100 particles and I change this emittance to one millimeter instead of one nanometer. So if we do this analysis, we observe that uh, yeah, then in that case, because initially we have uh, some statistic in the particles, uh, some of them, for example, uh, they are not exactly at 0 0.5, a little bit up and down, and some of them have uh, certain angles when they come out, upward, downward. So these statistics can be identified uh, by these phase space distribution, uh, which I'm going to talk in a second video. Thank you very much. See you next time.